Okay, so uh, we're going to go to transcription in detail. I'm also going to talk about introns and exons. So, the process of transcription itself never really causes uh, any problems whatsoever. It takes place in the nucleus. And, of course, it starts with our DNA. So, there's a sort of, I'll just do a little sort of sequence here. So, we've got our DNA all wound up, containing the code. And the first thing that's going to happen is that our section that is going to be transcribed or copied. So if this bit here is our gene. This is the bit that's got the code in it. So remember a gene codes for a protein. And in order to access that base sequence in there, we're going to need to do a bit of unwinding and unzipping. So our DNA is going to unwind and unzip. And you might remember this enzyme. So it's going to sort of, you know, trundle its way along here. And that enzyme is DNA helicase. Now there is an argument that says that RNA polymerase might do that, but I think if we stick to DNA helicase, that'll be just super. So then, we've got, what we'll end up with then, is our exposed bases. And of course we'll have two sets of exposed bases. We'll have a set on one side and we'll have its complementary set on the other side well, apologies those aren't very opposite each other now we only need one base sequence to code for one protein so we're only going to copy one side and we're going to copy it by complementary base pairing so the coding strands in inverted commas, copied by complementary base pairing. Now, it's quite easy to confuse now because we started with unzipping and unwinding and with complementary base pairing, it's quite easy to then start to get confused with DNA replication. If I was you, I'd do your stuff in two different colours or do them on different coloured cards or you know, use a different colour pen, use a different mechanism for learning them, but don't get them confused. So, if I open out this sort of strand that I'm going to copy, you have to imagine that it's attached up there. And we've got our sort of, the one that we're not going to copy. Just dotted line. So in dotted lines for that one, and this is the strand we're going to copy. Just do 12 bases. So uh, I'm just going to put some random letters in here. Well, they're not random, they are DNA letters. Um, but I've made them up, they're not a proper code. <laughs> I'm not going to get a proper protein here. So what we have now is an enzyme called RNA polymerase. And again, it's going to do the same thing that our DNA polymerase did, again, causing <laughs> masses of confusion. And what it's going to do is it's going to make, by adding one at a time, the complementary RNA basis. So everywhere we've got an A on DNA, we're going to get a U. So our next one will come in here, it'll be C, and of course we've got our RNA polymerase and what's that going to do? It's going to make that sugar phosphate backbone again. So it's going to join the new and this is where you have to 
specify it's going to join a new RNA nucleotide to the mRNA. So what we've made here will be a nice complementary copy. So name of that enzyme, RNA polymerase. So our final bit of this sequence is that we have now made our messenger RNA with its complementary base sequence. That one's messenger mRNA. Now, sadly, that isn't the whole story because if we were to look at a gene in detail, uh, it's composed of two things. So inside the gene, we've got introns and exons. So, let's colour those in. So, what I've done in I don't know, turquoise maybe are two bits of introns, and all the black bits are exons. Now, the way I remember it, is that exons are the bit that are going to exit the nucleus. And that tells me that these are the ones that code for the protein. And these other little bits, these introns, are actually non-coding portions. Obviously they are just a base sequence and so they can be, if you like, read by the translation um, apparatus should they get out. But the whole idea is that you take them out first so that they don't, um, that, so that they don't get read. So if we look to our mRNA then, our mRNA has just read that entire sequence. So it has in it the coding bit and the non-coding. So we've got coding, non-coding, coding, non-coding and coding. So it needs to be edited. So we call this mRNA that contains the introns and the exons this is called pre-mRNA. And this then needs to go through a process of editing. Does editors have two Ts? No idea. So the editing means that the introns are removed and the exons uh, are spliced. Splicing just means joining, spliced together. It's a great word, spliced. Always makes me think of sailors splicing ropes together. I don't know why that makes me happy, it just does. So now you've got your coding bit, coding Coding, coding, join them together. To make your mRNA, which exits via a nuclear pore. And this actually, then that is, that's the real, that's the code.